Hi, I'm Matthew Burchette. And this is our B-52 episode of Behind the Wings. All right, so if you've ever been to Wings Over the Rockies before, or even if you've seen our website, you can't miss the B-52. It's kind of our signature aircraft. It's right out front. Now, considering this is behind the wings and we do things a little bit differently, we're not just gonna look at the outside of the plane. Heck no, we're gonna go inside the plane. How do we get there? Bam! That hatch right there, baby. Yeah, time to get the boom lift. <laughs> it's getting good already. So far, so good. Oh, <laughs> that was easy. Oh, baby. It is not pretty in there, but we're going in anyway. So we're in the tail gunner position of the B-52. Now, as you can see, this cockpit is kind of beat up and part of that is because the windows are open to the sun so when you get to be 60 some odd years old I hope you look this good. Now unlike B-24s and B-17s of World War II the B-52 only had four guns and they were all back here. There were four 50 caliber machine guns that this lonely guy got to operate while the rest of the crew was way up front. Now, something that a lot of people don't know, the B-52 is actually the largest aircraft to ever have air-to-air -air kills. How cool is that? Now, we're going to go places that a lot of people have never seen. We're going to work our way all the way to the front cockpit by crawling through this monster. We'll get through the bomb bay and then into the crew compartment. So. Stick with us, you're not going to want to miss it. Alright, so I feel a little bit like Indiana Jones right now. It's kind of cool because we're moving through the inside of this plane. It's like nobody's been here before. Um, we're not even to the bomb bay yet, and so we stopped to take a look at the chaff dispenser. And if you don't know what chaff is, it's actually nothing more than long strips of kind of like tin foil. And they would bundle them up, and then they would push them out the plane. And what it would do is it would confuse the radar because this huge bundle would then break apart into these thousands of strips of, of tin foil and the radar would just see a giant cloud of nothing instead of, you know, an individual blip. And so if you look right up here, you can actually see that it says chaff dispenser loading instructions. And they would just put these tapes in here and it just punch out as much as you needed. How cool is that? I love this kind of stuff. It's like... Like I said, it's like nobody's ever been in here before except us. Oh, this is a great episode. All right, let's keep moving forward. They do not make this easy. I don't know if you guys know it, but in the B-29, there's actually a tube that runs through the bomb bay. As you can see, there ain't nothing like that here. We gotta crawl through this. And uh, the pigeons have gotten here before us. Thus the suits. This is uh, the fun part. Oh man. We made it to the Bombay. Oh, what an ordeal. We're not even really to the cockpit yet. We still got a wheel well to go. Anyway, in the Bombay is where the B-52 could carry up to 70,000 pounds of bombs. That is nuts. That's a lot of conventional weaponry or, as it was designed originally to do, carry nuclear bombs. Now luckily, B-52s never dropped a nuke in combat, but they dropped a lot of conventional bombs in Vietnam. In fact, we had a name for all those missions. We called them Arclight missions. And it would literally take out just acres of enemy territory, not only wiping out, you know, infantry and armored infantry down there, but also denying the Viet Cong of using the jungle. I mean, it was a massive, massive attack from a squadron of B-52s. And as you can see in here, it's a lot of room to pack some bomb tonnage. Well, let's keep going up to the front, because that's where all the really cool stuff is. Whew. 
Well, we made it. We're in the cockpit. And uh, as you can see, it's actually got quite a bit of a, all its equipment still left. It's pretty amazing. You know, we used to open this thing up to open cockpit days years ago, but we haven't done that since probably, wow, 2007 maybe? So you guys are getting a really inside look at this thing. Not everybody gets to do that. Now, one of the things you might notice is some of these windows look, let's be honest, pretty jacked up. And that's because in 1998, a guy actually climbed on top of this thing, doused it with gasoline, and tried to set this plane on fire. He was protesting America's landmine policy. Now, what that has to do with B-52s, I have no idea. Luckily, he didn't set this whole thing on fire. Now, there is some damage in here. In fact, about $250,000 worth of damage is what he did. Luckily, he was caught. He did some jail time. And our volunteer corps here at Wings Over the Rockies came to the rescue and actually really helped out this old bird. And that's the reason she looks like she does today. Otherwise, she might have gone to the scrap heap. Now, there's a lot more we gotta see. In fact, we gotta get on top of this thing. So I'm on top of the B-52, and if you didn't know it right off the top of your head, which I'm sure you probably don't, I didn't, the wingspan of this old girl is 185 feet wide, and her length, 159 feet. That's actually nine feet longer than our B-1 bomber. That's a pretty big airplane, and there's a lot more that we got to talk about, so let's get moving. So we're still on top of the B-52, and frankly, I'm just kind of having fun up here. But what you guys may not know is that the B-52 actually made its first flight in 1952, and then entered the U.S. Air Force inventory in 1955. Our B-52 is actually 62 years old. It is the second oldest B-52 left. Only Pima's B-52 is older than ours. That's really impressive. And what's even more impressive is the fact that B-52s are actually going to be flying until about 2045. That's nuts. So there's an old saying in the B-52 community. This is your grandfather's B-52 because there are some pilots who are literally flying the same plane that their fathers flew before them. Not a lot of military planes have that kind of legacy. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Behind the Wings. We sure did, even though we got dirty. But stay tuned because we got way cooler stuff coming up soon. We'll talk later. <laughs>